It began with a letter. A tattered envelope, postmarked from India, arrived on the desk of one of England's most distinguished mathematicians, G. H. Hardy. The pages contained mathematical formulas unlike anything Hardy had ever seen. Equations so intricate, so profound, that they seemed almost divine. But who was the man behind these impossible equations? To find the answer, we must travel back in time to a small village in southern India. Srinivasa Ramanujan was born into poverty in Erode, India in 1887. His father was a lowly clerk, his mother a devout singer of sacred hymns. But from an early age, it was clear that young Ramanujan's mind worked differently. While other children memorized simple arithmetic, Ramanujan devoured the most advanced mathematical concepts he could find. And then, at the age of 13, he discovered a book that would change his life forever. A book without proofs, a list of raw mathematical results. To most, it was incomprehensible. To Ramanujan, it was a challenge. With no formal training, he set out to prove every equation by himself, reinventing entire branches of mathematics alone. But genius comes at a cost. Ramanujan's obsession with numbers led to his downfall in the classroom. At 16, he earned a scholarship to college, but failed every subject except mathematics. By 19, he had dropped out twice. With no degree, no job and no future, Ramanujan found himself on the brink of destitution. His family feared for his future. But Ramanujan, he feared only one thing, wasting his mathematical gift. Even as a lowly clerk in Madras, he never stopped calculating. And then, a bold decision. With encouragement from friends, Ramanujan reached out beyond India to the greatest mathematicians in the world. Letter after letter, he wrote, most went unanswered, until one letter reached Cambridge, a letter that would change the history of mathematics forever. As G. H. Hardy read through the pages, he felt something he had never felt before. These weren't just equations. This was something else, something extraordinary. And in that moment, one thought consumed him. This man, he must come to Cambridge. But for Ramanujan, Cambridge would not be a land of opportunity. It would be a battleground of scepticism, isolation and a race against time. In 1914, after months of hesitation, Srinivasa Ramanujan left everything he knew behind, his family, his culture, his country, to journey to the heart of the mathematical world, Cambridge University. But this was no triumphant arrival. It was the beginning of his greatest struggle. From the moment he arrived in England, Ramanujan was an outsider. He spoke little English. He followed a strict vegetarian diet which made finding food a daily battle. And most of all, he had no formal training. He was a self-taught genius thrown into a world of rigid academia. At Trinity College, Ramanujan was not just among great minds. He was being tested by them. G. H. Hardy immediately recognized Ramanujan's brilliance, but also his recklessness. The young Indian mathematician worked not with proofs, but with intuition. He claimed his formulas came to him as visions from the Hindu goddess Namagiri. Hardy sighed, exasperated, yet undeniably impressed. Ramanujan had an uncanny ability, an intuition that defied conventional mathematics. Ramanujan, you cannot simply say this is true without proving it but Ramanujan only smiled. It is true, sir, he said, his voice unwavering. I see it. In Cambridge, mathematics was built on rigor. Every theorem required proof. Every equation had to be dissected and justified. But Ramanujan's mind worked differently. He saw numbers as living things, dancing in patterns only he could perceive. Hardy knew that if Ramanujan was to be accepted by the mathematical community, he needed to refine his raw genius into something the world could understand. At first, the mathematical world dismissed him. They called him undisciplined, untrained, a mere curiosity from the colonies. But one by one, his theorems began to prove their worth. Then came the breakthroughs. His discoveries in number theory, prime numbers and continued fractions stunned even the greatest minds of his time. He uncovered formulas that had eluded mathematicians for centuries, equations that would later become essential in physics, cryptography and even black hole theory. 
Speaking at a Royal Society meeting, Hardy said to the audience, I have never met his equal. He is a man whose talent defies explanation. In 1918, Ramanujan achieved what no Indian had before. He was elected as a Fellow of the Royal Society, one of the highest honours in mathematics. As illness tightened its grip on his body, Ramanujan's mind only burned brighter. In the face of scepticism, exile and failing health, he had gifted the world mathematical treasures beyond imagination. What followed was the breathtaking legacy of a man whose theorems continue to shape the modern world. A man who saw infinity. Numbers were his language. Formulas were his poetry. In just a few short years, Srinivasa Ramanujan reshaped mathematics in ways that even today we are still uncovering. One of Ramanujan's most famous discoveries was his infinite series for PI. Unlike previous formulas, his method converged with astonishing speed, allowing modern computers to calculate trillions of digits of pi with unprecedented efficiency. Ramanujan's final letters to Hardy contained something even more mysterious, what he called mock theta functions. For decades, these were seen as mathematical curiosities, but today they play a crucial role in quantum physics and string theory. These functions have been used to explore the very fabric of the universe, from quantum gravity to the nature of black holes. Ramanujan's work on partition theory, breaking numbers into sums, was so revolutionary that it took mathematicians decades to fully comprehend. His formulas now form the backbone of modern combinatorics and cryptography, prime numbers, nature's most mysterious sequence, Mathematicians struggled for centuries to predict their patterns, and then came Ramanujan. His formulas gave new insights into prime distributions, insights that are now used in cryptography, internet security, and advanced number theory. Decades after his death, a lost notebook was discovered, containing some of his most groundbreaking work. The mathematical community was stunned, even in death, Ramanujan was still teaching us, even today, many of Ramanujan's conjectures remain unsolved. His notebooks continue to inspire new discoveries, proving that his genius was not just of his time, but for all time. Hardy would later say, he was the greatest mathematician I have ever known. But despite his brilliance, Ramanujan's time was running out. His health deteriorated, and the land that once nurtured his genius called him home. What followed was a farewell etched in history, one of brilliance, sacrifice, and a legacy that would endure far beyond his final days. After five years in Cambridge, the cold, the hunger, and the relentless battle against time had taken their toll. Ramanujan had achieved mathematical immortality, but his body had paid the price. In 1919, he returned to India, not as the triumphant scholar, but as a man on the brink of death, home at last. But it was not the same home he had left, and he was no longer the same man. Even in his final days, his mind never rested. His last letters to Hardy spoke of a new mathematical vision, something called mock theta functions. At the time, no one fully understood them. Decades later, they would be found crucial in modern physics. On April 26, 1920, at the age of just 32, Srinivasa Ramanujan passed away. His life was brief, but his impact was eternal. The words Hardy himself would later admit, I still say to myself when I'm depressed and find myself forced to listen to tiresome people that I had at least one great experience in my life that I once knew Ramanujan. A century has passed, yet Ramanujan's work continues to shape modern mathematics, from quantum physics to cryptography, from computer algorithms to the nature of black holes. His theorems live on, whispering to those who dare to seek the infinite. He saw what others could not. He glimpsed infinity. And though he is gone, his numbers remain.